Hey everyone, this is Ole Sharanki from Laddering Your Success, and you're listening to the LYS Podcast. Good afternoon, if you smell what we're cooking on this Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon here. Hello, happy Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to another Sunday of LYS Free Student Mentoring. Man, give a shout out, man. Hey, I have not forgotten. We are going to, I, when I was setting up today, I was like, man, I need to get that soundboard. I need to get that soundboard so we can have like the, the fake applause. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want my, I want my, I want all of that so we can get going with this. But happy Sunday. Welcome to another session of LYS Free Student Mentoring. Folks, my name is Ole Shorunke. I'm here with Fester Samoye. I'm here with Daniel Hill. Back at it again. We're in September, the first September of the month, of the year, so sorry. The first Sunday of September. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. Fester, how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing lovely. I'm doing lovely. It's been a major blessing. Uh, he's his birthday was yesterday. I'm a wife. And so for those that don't know, and, and we, we celebrated, I think, in good fashion, pretty much through the whole weekend, you know, you know, people want to do it big, but, but that's the thing I'm really grateful for is when people know themselves and they don't overextend themselves. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just so funny because now it's like, people be like, oh, it's my birthday. I got to go to Dubai. I got to do this. I got, you know what I'm saying? Like all this stuff that's like, don't get me wrong, live your life, do your thing. But also a saying that my parents said was cut your cloth according to your size. I think it would be how the saying dude. goes. And so, and so, yeah, so now to me, it's, it's just like, man, enjoy those moments, but don't, don't, don't make it, you know, dictate your life, right? Why, why would you want a defining moment to dictate your life? So, so yeah, man, it's feeling good. Feeling good. D Hill, how are you doing? Man, I'm good, man. Just over there chilling, man. I'm chilling. Same old, man. I'm sorry. Same old blessing. You know how I'm doing? Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. <laughs> That's what's up. That's I'm what's so I get so happy. I gave I actually gave D Hill some of my mommy some Igusi. So I gave the D Hill some of that Igusi. And I and I was so tired the day the night prior that I, I didn't get a chance to make him rice. And I was like, hey, sorry, I wasn't able to give you rice. He was like, Oh, that ain't no problem. <laughs> I will still enjoy this. I, I well, don't need rice. So he <laughs> I got <laughs> go ahead. You gonna say something, D Hill? Oh shoot, man. I was, I was just going to show you this real quick. I'm going to make sure that it's clean right now and ready for my second helping. That's all I was going to do. You know? I will be giving that back, okay? <laughs> Whatever you feel like bringing from the Lord that he puts on your heart, uh, I shall receive. I'll be sure to let my mother know. I'll be sure to let her know. <laughs> Mama Sharonke, I'll be sure to let her know. All right, folks. And you know what I was going to say, man? It's so awesome. Fester, let me share real quick. It's so awesome to see Hill in the hallways this year. You know, you know, we, we, we live in life without fear. We live in life. <laughs> we're, li we're living life without fear. We're living life with no boundaries. You know what I mean? We're just, wherever we're taking is where we're going. And, you know, it's just so good to be in the hallways, see my good friends. D Hill, Mr. Crawford, all the teachers out there. It's just so awesome to see you guys in the hallways. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, we got that code. We were looking at you like, hey, hey, brother, hey, brother, hey, yo, we doing, hey, brother, we doing our thing, brother. How you doing? Yes, sir. You know, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. That's, all right. What, what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about teachers. We're going to be talking about teachers. We're going to be talking about what's going on with teachers. What are some of the things that we need to do? We're going to talk about broad, broad terms, macro terms, and then we're going to bring it in micro terms when we're talking about laddering your success and our be no do methodology. How do these things work together? Because as you know, teachers, educators, I'm sorry, are our are one of our main stakeholders, one of the main groups of people we seek to help in advancing and helping young people or people gain access to their purpose and create that path of generational wealth. When people think of generational wealth, you know, it's so funny. We think of, I want to leave an inheritance. I want to set up, a, you know, you see so many things about that, about, I want to set up a trust. I want to do this. I want to do that. Festus has mentioned this several times. There have been several entrepreneurs 
and business people who have basically done these experiments where they started from nothing after they've already been successful and they were still able to become wealthy because they practice certain principles. And that, you know, that is generational wealth. Absolutely. You don't, you may not be able to leave necessarily, you know, tangible things. You may not be able to leave physical money, but if you can leave knowledge uh, of systems, of patterns that people can follow after you that will put them in a beneficial situation, that is generational wealth because there are people who are born with that physical, that tangible, but they cannot sustain it because they do not understand the principles. Ooh, talk you know that I mean? talk. So just one of those things that we, that we think about here. And, that, and that's what we do here at LYS, all right? So folks, if you want to get in contact with us on Instagram, LYS students, be no do underscore LYS on Instagram. On Facebook, Laddering Your Success. Just type in there, Laddering Your Success. On YouTube, same thing. Just in, the, in that search bar, Laddering Your Success. I think we changed it up a little bit. I put some stuff here for you. TikTok, L-Y-S, be no do. Who's this right here? Mike Tyson, I'm coming for you. This is TikTok, that person moving back and right. And the Tyson's looking at him. TikTok, we coming for you. We coming for you. We're going to find you. I know what you did to us. And I know a lot of people are like, what did, what, why do you always do that? Why do you always put TikTok like that? So if you haven't heard us talk about this before, we were on, we were doing really well on TikTok. I mean, the content was just getting likes and views. Everyone was looking at our stuff. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, like no one, like it was just getting like no views. And we were still putting out the same content, but I don't know what happened in the algorithm. And so, you know, your mind goes so many different places. You're like, is this a conspiracy? Are we, are we... Even though, you know, people may see us as this small little faction, small little group, do people see how powerful this is or how powerful this can be? And I'm like, nope. A hundred percent. We can't have this out in the masses. We can't have the people, these young people having a sense, a true sense of self. Do you know how many industries will go out of business? Oh, a hundred percent. Young people figure out their purpose and the fact that they can create their own you know, their own sectors, their own industries themselves, you know? It's crazy how, how much so many industries are, are based off of the exploitation of people who don't know themselves. And, and, and Absolutely. The, like, like a huge one, just, just a huge one is, is, is the makeup. And, and it's not even makeup per se in terms of personal care items. Like if you, if you really look at just one company, Unilever, you ever heard heard of the Unilever? Bro, you, you, you ever seen the breakout tree of Unilever? Of all their brands that they, yeah. Yeah, all the brands that they own. Bro, if one person finds out, like, I don't need three different kinds of smell good, you know what I'm saying, in order to feel good. Now, I'm. Mm. it's different if you just say, hey, I like this smell, I like this smell, I like this smell. But it's a whole other thing when your self-esteem is shot and your personal self-image is shot mm. and you're just riding on if i smell good that somebody will like me like literally if you watch the little axe commercials i don't know if you remember the axe commercials where like they'd be like spray on the axe and then the girls would come out of nowhere and jump on the guys and it's like you're playing on young men's insecurity <laughs> you know what i mean like like what, why would you why would you do that you know but they do that and because people don't have a sense of purpose right? They don't have a strong sense of who they are, their character, their well-being. You know, they just got, hey, look, we're going to shove these companies, our, our, our dollars, and not even really think through why they're doing what they're doing. So, so yeah, TikTok, watch out because we're about to start posting some, some of our highlights on there and see, see how, if, if y'all, if y'all back on good behavior or not. Mood. <laughs> uh, 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 so there's this image with a young Mike Tyson looking looking down his opponent, and Ole was riding mood on the board. For those, he's uh, a who, bad man. He's later. a bad man. We <laughs> he's a bad man. <laughs> well, before we before we continue, I want to give a couple shout outs. I want to give a shout out to the thank you guys for just 
continuing to support us, sharing our materials, allowing our material to be posted in your group. I also want to give a shout out to Edu Hustle and Cedric hey. over at Edu Hustle. Again, we're forging a new partnership. We're working through the the, the minutia of it, but but shout out to to Cedric over there at Edu Hustle. If you're an educator and you're thinking, hey man, what other how what other ways can I leverage my skills? Go ahead and check out Edu the Edu Hustle community. You can check them out on Facebook. You can check out their website. Yeah, shout out to Cedric and Edgy Hustle. So, so yeah, Ole, you want to hop right into this thing? Or, yeah, continue. Please. For sure. For sure. Just a couple more, I think. Info at laddingyoursuccess.com. If you have an email you want to send us, coming soon. We got, we got some stuff coming on Discord coming soon, very soon. Just keep your eye out on that. It's coming. It's coming. You see my, my girl over here on the left talking about it's coming. It's coming, all right? And... On Cash App, dollar sign, laddering your success, laddering your success. If you love what we're doing, if you want to keep supporting us, if you love the content, if you love what you're learning, please send us something. Show us your appreciation. Let us know. All right. We totally appreciate it. And if you can't, that's good. That's okay too. All right. So I had a quick video I wanted to show us here. I wanted to show us a quick video here. It was pretty interesting. And it's from about like eight. How long ago? I want to say maybe eight years ago, I saw this video, but I thought it was still very poignant to some things that we are dealing with uh, as a society. And when I say society, I probably mean like a world society when it comes to teaching and education. I want to make sure. Can we hear that? Were we able to hear that? I don't know if you're able to hear everything there. Let me see if I can. Fess, is we able to hear that? It's really low. I think you have really to, low? yeah, you have to click on the share audio button or something like that. All righty. Let me see where the share audio. There it is. I'm waiting for the same to go out. Uh, there it is. All right. I got you. His first introduction to teachers gathering outside the White House sums up Matt Damon's appreciation for them. He takes photos of them. So I ask him. Do you have a message for the teachers? Hang in there. Yeah. Judging by this turnout, they are. This Save the Schools rally features big names in the education community. Free public education. Diane Ravitch, Jonathan Kozel. What teachers make. The teacher turned poet, Taylor Molly. Objection overruled. And while his name speaks for itself, Matt Damon says his own fame is because of teachers. I just want them to know that there are millions and millions of regular people who, who, who deeply appreciate what they do with their lives and, 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 and know that this country would be a mess without them. So, so that's what I... Do you have a personal teacher in your mind that you think of when you say this? I have a lot of them. Here's one of them. This is my history teacher from high school, Larry. So I ask Larry Aronson myself, what's the secret? If the teachers had ownership over their curriculum. We owned our curriculum. We had a huge say in what we were doing and not without evaluation. We were assessed, but we had a great voice in what we were doing as teachers. And today they're trying to find that voice. Right. Who's schools? Our schools. But we're standing up for every child's right to a quality public education. As this Boston mom and teacher puts it before introducing her famous son. I see you both. Damon tells me what he was thinking about when he wrote this speech. I feel more and more appreciative every day for the, for the teachers that I had. And the older I get, the more I really, it really sinks in as I get older, how lucky I was. And, and I want that for, uh, for every kid. Which is why he's here today, he says. We thank you and we will always have your back. And why he plans to be here tomorrow for tomorrow's teachers. Brittany Morehouse, nine. Well, that's that's powerful. You know, we we do often talk to about students here, but but I like this episode, the fact that we're going in and talking about teachers and 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 where teachers are, you know, and you know how teachers can kind of get back in that driver's seat. So so yeah, I'm I'm all ears, man. Go ahead. Teachers have the ability to take a seed, to one plant a seed. Teachers have the ability to then take that seed and allow it to germinate and let it grow into something. All right, we just showed the example of Matt Damon. That's just one of, I can't even describe how many, I can't give you a number of how many. You, me, Hill, here, anyone who's watching, anyone in this country, all right, who's been in public education, most, let me say most people, can name one teacher, and we've done it several times, who has had 
an impact on them in their lives, right? Now we can we, we can also say, you know, you may have had a teacher who had a negative impact on you, right? That that can happen as well. We're gonna we're gonna get into that a little bit. But I think for the most part, we understand that teachers have the ability to take a seed that's been planted in you and help it grow into something amazing, something beautiful. And I think in this past, this past year, definitely in this, this school year right now, I'm appreciating that more to a, to a very high level. I am appreciating the fact that, you know, when one teacher sees a child who is a constant disruption, that that child is speak to his or her environment, right? And it's now our responsibility as, as teachers to, to find a way to help that child either understand why what they're doing is, is taking away from their learning or to help them create a way to, to use that to their advantage. And I think that's what the, the really good teachers do. I do feel like a lot of teachers don't have those opportunities, right? Because we get so bogged down. And so I say that to say, remember in the video that we just watched where I think that was Matt Damon's history teacher. He was talking about, we had a say in the curriculum. We had much more of a say. Now I say that very carefully. Had as in past tense, right? We had much more of a say. And what happened? He said, we were assessed, right? Which we are now, but we had much more of a say in the outcome or what we were able to teach. And you look at what, what happens now, and you see a lot of teachers looking at things and, and, and they're very matter of fact, a very common sense with the way that they come at certain things. It's like, why are we, why, why are we doing these things? Like, I know for a while, there was a time when people were like, why are we, why, why did the kids have to learn cursive writing? And I don't know who did, but someone took cursive writing out, right? They took cursive writing out. And I remember saying from a, from a, from a certain time, I was just like, don't kids need that motor development, right? Yeah. You know, don't they need to be able to, to gain that? Because guess what happens after, a couple of years after that? We had kids who were in the fifth and sixth grade couldn't cut properly, yeah. To put things in their, in their science, their math, their social studies yeah. notebook because they didn't have those motor skills developed. Ooh, you know what I mean? Ooh, man. So there, there are these very little things that, that help. And, and, and so we have, we have, we have a, we have a big issue in front of us, right? It's like, how do we, how do we raise, how do we rear our, our children in today's society, what are the necessary skills they they need to have in order to be successful adults? Man, right? man you you you're speaking some powerful powerful things, bro. And, and the reason, again, some people say, "Oh, that's so simple," but the reality is, a lot of people don't even know what the word curriculum means. Mm, very true. Right. Very true. So, so the actual word comes from curriculum vita, right? And vita is where we get vitamin, right? Hmm. But it's a Latin word that means life, right? Hmm. Or life force or life energy. And curriculum in Latin actually means the path or direction of, and then that's where the vita comes in. The curriculum is the path or direction of learning life. That's what curriculum is actually supposed to mean. Hmm. And because we have gotten so far away from the basics of education to do a lot of frou-frou stuff that to me has, is inconsequential. I know this is going to offend people. I don't care. Be offended. Like people who are in inner cities, children who cannot read and write, but can argue about sexuality and gender. Don't get me wrong. That's a, that's an important thing. Don't get me wrong. But that means, that means you are literally skipping because sexuality and gender for most people doesn't become an issue until they're about 13, 14 years old. When their hormones kick in, 
you know, and then, and then they, they, you know, depending on the situation, depending on the parents' background, you know, values, character, all those different types of things. There's, there's, there's so many layers deep on that. I don't even want to get into that, which I can get into that, but I know somebody's going to hit and be like, ah, oh, you know, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. The thing is, you can't do something as basic as read and write and arithmetic, but you are full of this other stuff, right? How do you plan to make it through life? And that's, that's the thing that's disappointing to me because why is it so disappointing to me? And as a person who's, who's overcome a lot of things growing up in the inner city, it's like, I'm so glad I had teachers like, like, who is that? What's her name? Oh my goodness. Her name's, I think her name is Brown, right? Who was like, no, you're going to read. No, you're going to, you're going to do this period. You're smart. I know you're capable. I know you can do it because the thing is that developed me, even though a lot of people said, man, this guy has behavioral issues as a kid. I was a kid. I have behavioral issues, I guess. Right. But the fact that you sat down and discipline is a big form of education. You know what I'm saying? Discipline is a big form of uh, you know, of sitting down doing, like you said earlier, the, the cursive writing, sitting down and saying, Hey, you need to learn this and you need to learn that. Those are such big forms of, of education. Why? Because hopefully, hopefully if you don't have purpose, but you have skills, when you find purpose, you could then employ those skills, Ooh. right? And that's where a lot of inner city kids find themselves is yeah. we lack purpose, we lack direction, we lack guidance. But if we have the skills, once we get that inkling of, yo, this is my way out, yo, I could do, we run with it. And that's one of the reasons why so many of these kids are hungry and thirsty for sports and whatnot, right? Because the thing is, that skill is their way out, so they run with it. But then they find themselves deficit when they get out in the rest of the world and they can't read contracts, Okay. And then they get took. And how is gender studies supposed to help them at that point? So to me, again, it's it's not Democrat, Republican, whatever, whatever. It's yeah. your the curriculum vita. You got to look at where this student is developing and then where they're going. You know what I mean? So again, I, I know I'm I'm just unpacking all what you've said, bro, because you you said some very powerful things yeah, yeah. in regard to education and what you said. I know it sounded simplistic to some people, but there's yeah. a lot of history and power behind what you're sharing. So absolutely. And that's that's such a beautiful point. I think oh, man, that's why we've got that's why history is so important. That's why history is so important. One of the most important questions you're gonna ask yourself is why am I here? <laughs> and so you have to understand historically where a lot of the things like how is our world constructed why what themes were around that said this is the way we're going to do this you know i was talking to a friend the other day and i said if you really look at us eagle eye view of like a highway doesn't it look like blood like the way blood moves the way cars are moving on the highway Wow. This way and back. Doesn't that remind you of how a blood how uh, blood circulates, circulates throughout the yeah, throughout the body? Circulates. Like like who came up, you know, you know what I'm saying? Who came up with these ideas and these concepts? Yeah. You know what I mean? And and how they play out in our actual lives. And you know, that's that's kind of like a naturalistic way of, of of learning, right? You have those people who who use nature. What well, well, it's 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 observant, bro. It's Absolutely, observant yeah. because have you ever heard the saying, all roads lead to Rome? Mm, you yes, ever sir. heard the saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, the reason why that's the saying is because literally our modern traffic system was built off of Roman systems, mm. which were literally built off of the capture and conquering of, of peoples. Uh. And so what they would do is as the soldiers would go out, they would build roads that literally would lead back to Rome. Wow. <laughs> and the, 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 the Roman highway, right, yeah. was actually was actually the, the system, right, to get goods, services, and people back to Rome, but also to get to get soldiers out quickly. Huh. And it just goes back to what you were saying about about history, right? Like these uh, he said I need to <laughs> We all do. 
We but, all do. Uh, but, you know, this is this is why that that history is of such magnitude to us. Yeah. Right. Because because, again, if you don't know your history, you don't know your roots, you don't know your roots, you don't know where you're growing. Bro, I just I just watched this Jim Rohn. You know, I'd be you know, you see the little TikTok, but Jim Rome said something so powerful. He said, I don't know if it was a direct quote from, I, he, I'm quoting him because he said, I don't know if he got it from somewhere else. Yeah. He said, human beings are the only beings that don't live out their maximized potential. He said, what does that mean? He said, if you have a tree, the roots of the tree go down as deep as they possibly can huh. before, they, before they stop. They mm -hmm. go as deep as they can. They don't just stop halfway. Then he said, if you, that same tree is going to grow as high and as tall as it possibly can, it's going to spread its leaves as far as it can. It's going to have as many leaves as it possibly can. It's going to bear as much fruit as it possibly can. Yeah. And that's just the nature of the tree. Huh. Human beings, because of the power of choice, right? We don't maximize our full potential. And this is the sad part. If you don't have purpose, you don't know how to employ your skills and potential. And so you got a lot of people out here who are starting businesses, who are going back to school, who are getting degrees and certifications. And the thing is, there's not really a strong sense of purpose. So they're not maximizing any of the skills that they're using. They're literally become mediocre in Ooh. 50 different things. Ooh. And, and why is this so significant to, to teachers? It goes right back to what you said. As an educator, you get a chance to plant the seed. You get a chance to water the seed. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that reminds me of a quote. I'm not going to say where the quote comes from because I don't want anyone to tease me about where I get my quotes from. I'm talking to you, Daniel Hill. But don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. I, I will still tease you regardless. So it, everybody, it's from Miles. I want y'all to know it's from Miles. Ah, ah, it's, ah. it's from either Jesus or Miles. That's it. <laughs> Pastor Miles said that a mango a mango tree when a mango when a mango produces when a mango tree produces mangoes mm -hmm. you will go to the mango mm. the mango will not come looking for you right mm. when you produce when you work in your purpose people will come to you wow you will not you will not be hey hey look 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 at me i'm a mango no, the yeah. mango is beautiful and sweet and delicious. Yeah. And it, and it fills a need, right? It serves a purpose. Yeah. So people will come looking for it. Mm. And I think that's big on what you said. I mean, if you're not grounded, right? And you're kind of just doing the jack of all master of none thing. That's kind of what you're, you're just going to be spewing out mediocrity. I mean, let's just call it what it is. You're going to be spewing out mediocrity. And I think the hardest thing for me, Festus, was understanding it's kind of two things kind of twofold understanding the difference between a hobby and a and purpose like a mm -hmm. hobby and something that you kind of like to do yeah, something you really like to do. versus the avocation yes sir that right knowing the difference between those two things because i think once you truly understand your purpose it's really going to be a compass for everything you do after that like it's going to be very easy for you to discern whether or not you should be in something like 100 percent or not and I think that's, that, that's definitely a huge point right there. 100%. 100%. Let's take a look at this question here. Very important. What, what does today's teacher have to do that our teachers did not? Mm. What does today's teacher have to do that our teachers did not? And I don't want to use have, but maybe we could say, what are some of the things that teachers, teachers have to be equipped to do that teachers back in our day didn't did not have to and, and and let's talk about a quick example i think one of the big issues that that teachers really have to understand or know about is like sel right that's social social emotional learning how to how to connect with your kids in a much different way mm. than, than than our teachers connected with us i go back to i believe it was 90 93 mm. 93 94 when i was in the second grade when i had moved to elementary school Miss Baker and Miss Cloys. I still remember Shadow wow. Oaks Elementary. Wow. And man, I was a piece of work over there. I mean, I was I was wilding. I was I was wilding like Blanca on Street Fighter. Oh wow. I was wilding like a little kid from the Wild Thornberries. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was wilding. Oh my goodness. 
and I was just, <laughs> I was, <laughs> was, I was just fortunate to have them. They never really had like we had sit downs, but we didn't have like sit downs. Like essentially today, we what we do is is therapy. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of what we do, like, like what I do in therapy with my own counselor, I do with the kids, like, you know, I, and, and I'm yeah. like, can I still that and do that with my kids? Can I still that and do that with my kids? Wow. And so, yeah. So that's just one of the things I'm going to throw that to, to you, Fester, to you, Hill. What are some of those skills and things you think teachers got to have these days that are our teachers did not have when we were younger. You know, I'm going to be deferring a lot during this one. So I want to hear what, hear what D Hill has to say before anything else. Go ahead, D Hill. Oh, uh, shoot. That, that was it. One to five now, bro. You got to say five good things before you say one bad thing. Like, man, man, Miss Holiday would call her mama and she wouldn't have to say no good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be out there wilding. Parenting pretty much, pretty much they want you to be their parent. Uh, what else? It's just a lot of stuff, man. Like you said, social, emotional. That, that was cold, bro. Sorry. You said what? parents. You said something. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to cut you No, off. you good? Oh, yeah. Parenting. Pretty much you just got to be like their father. Like, uh, and really, I really, I just think that that is what kind of made teachers tired the last couple of years because I got to be like, like they was talking about these teachers are so tired because they have to be this, this person's family which is actually causing them not to be able to actually start their own families. Yeah. So, so that right there. <laughs> you know, Boy, don't you come around <laughs> talking like that and just <laughs> keep going like you ain't drop hot <laughs> fire. I've been around y'all too long. Fire. <laughs> I've been around y'all too long, man. It's oh, coming wow. out now, man. That fest just dropped in my spirit. <laughs> oh, man. But no, it's it's a, it's a lot of stuff, man. It's just like you said, especially all this, like, being critiqued off the children. Like, now they are critiquing us off the way the children feel about us. Mm. So now it's just ridiculous. So go ahead, Festus. No, no, no. I, I want you to continue because I just think, you know, for me, to, to say, we want you to be aware, th these children to be aware of their emotional condition, position, whatever, social, emotional learning stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to scrutinize you to the point that, like, you know what I'm saying? But I want to hear more, D. Hill. Continue, please. please. Oh, yeah. And I told him, man, I, I was talking to Crawford. I was on the Crawford how they want us to bless bad stuff and not good children. So... Mm -hmm. We actually create programs for kids who are always tearing up stuff to try to get them. And we say the same thing. I remember, I remember back in the day, I really got stuff good, which was good because I was always acting bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now they they actually expect us to focus more on the bad kids and try to give them trees, give them this, give them this, and just let the good kids actually struggle, really. I mean, they're not struggling like his thing. They will make it, but why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why Why should the middle ground and good kids make it on their own? We let the middle... And that's the problem with our society. Back in the day, we was growing, doing better because we focused like, who was that? Singapore, I think, changed everything, right? Singapore was like, you know what? That's it. We're going to focus on the people who want to do better <laughs> and, we, and succeed and grow and grow. So that's another thing changed. So it was that. And something else I thought of, I have to remember what it was, but it was just like, I can't remember, man. It slipped my mind, but it's just it's, the way our society is focused on blessing bad and actually just letting the good struggle is just sad. Go yeah. ahead, Ole. I mean, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, Festus. Go ahead, go ahead, Festus. Go ahead, Festus. Well, no, I was just going to say, uh, again, there's a lot of correlations between that and literally how the government's working right now. Because, and, and that's where, that's where, you know, again, I, I, I take issue because, okay, I understand that people in bad situations need help, right? I, and I'm very grateful for that help, right? Because, because I've been recipients of help in the past, yeah. and currently, you know what I'm saying? However, there's a difference between a safety net and a springboard. Ooh. And, a, and a lot of these government programs that are designed to be safety nets 
end yeah. up becoming literally traps. They become nets of traps. Instead yeah. of a springboard to say, you're doing good, we're pushing, we're helping you to do better and go forward. And then we're going to take away that help, you know, because yeah. what, and what, what do I mean by that? I mean, like, to me, wouldn't it make more sense to say, listen, we're going to give government programs as long as you're doing stuff that's productive, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to, you know, education. We're going to do yes. public yes. education. Yes. But, but the thing is, if you want to go to school, the government will 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 pay up to a certain amount if yes. people are getting good grades. That's it. All yeah. you That's it. That's it. Which, which it, it is kind of like that, but because it's so convoluted, the students don't even understand the pathway, right? A student can have a 4.0 GPA and not fully understand the pathway to get scholarships. Yeah. And that's why I'm a big fan of some of the stuff Texas did. And, and a lot of parents don't know this. A lot of parents don't know this, that there were laws changed in, I'm going to say mid 2010s, right? So around 2010 or 2000, mid 2000. I don't know what that, you know what I mean? But anyway, yeah. the laws were changed to where if you are a high school student graduating from a public high school and you graduate in a certain class, right? A certain yeah. position in your class. So basically, let's say top 1%. The top 1% in Texas has automatic admission into certain colleges and universities. Mm. And then there are scholarships that actually back up with that. And if mm. you're a valedictorian or salutedictorian, and a lot of a lot of us didn't know why those positions were so sought after, it was guaranteed admission and guaranteed scholarships for having those positions, Ooh. right? Yeah. A lot of us did, a lot of us didn't know that, and so yeah. nobody's really explaining this to the kids. It's just like come in, come in here. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Instead of saying like, "Yo, come in here right now. This is an opportunity, but this is what this opportunity means in the future." Yeah. But and this is the hard part for us is how do we get the benefits today? Because a lot of these kids, you know, I know this. I started working when I was like 11. That was my, my first job. <laughs> D, D Hill's laughing. You know what I'm saying? Which is good, good for me because now, in retrospect, I understand work totally differently than a lot of other people understand work. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, so I just think as educators – they need to release a lot of the burdens on y'all in terms yeah. of scrutinizing the educator. You know, there's a difference between, again, assessing somebody and scrutinizing somebody. Facts. It sounds like scrutinization <laughs> to me, but go, go ahead. Go ahead, Ole. You know, on the theme of, scrutin of scrutinizing teachers, uh, I'm reminded of something Hill said when he was talking, and that was what we have to do now in the state of, I think it's the state of Texas with the T-tests. I'm not sure if it's, I don't know if everyone's adopted it. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I would, I would assume, right, Hill? Everywhere yeah. in the state of Texas for the most part? You know, they slow. Yeah. <laughs> part of what we had to do was, our students had to do a survey. Where basically, they're asking our, they're asking our students, like, is your teacher, you know, does he make a nice environment for learning? You know, all these different questions. It, Essentially, they come out to like, is your teacher nice? Is your teacher doing like, you know, is he, are you learning? Does, does your teacher do things if you don't understand this, that, and the third? And someone made such a really strong mm -hmm. point. Number one, these children in 2022, uh, I don't know if they're really capable of doing that in an unbiased manner. Mm. And this is what we talked about. We said, okay, what if you're having a rough day and you're getting an attitude with your teacher? And that just happens to be the day you get the survey. And that's also the day you decide as a teacher to let that student know who you really are. And you give them the, the, full, the full finger of force. Boy, I have told you about this six times. Do I tell you again? And they go in here and you've been nice all year. But that yeah. one day and they go in there. No, horrible. My teacher's horrible. Worst <laughs> teacher ever. Any other comments you would like to put? This is the worst ever. <laughs> but this is what happens, right? This is what happens. And so when you talk about teachers having more of a say, you know, I, I think that's what, I think the sense of that's one of the things a lot of teachers are talking about. Yep, yep. Giving them a platform, right? To be able to um, 
well just letting them let, letting teachers have more of a say in what goes on in the in the classroom curriculum wise let's take a look here all right so that was that was a good question there so we talked a little bit about sel we talked a little bit about removing a lot of the burden that teachers have hill you brought up a very strong point of becoming more of a parent and i that that that, that just hit such a a string with me because you know it, it, it's kind of had to let me realize some things like man that was so powerful what you said hill you said teachers in trying to become parents to other people's children especially you from... bro you be buying clothes shirts and everything man yeah yes yes like how a kid can come with a 1300 iphone but can't go to walmart and get a five dollar shirt yeah like, no, that's not how life works. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, that, and that's why I said it's such a powerful point because you um, you don't realize how much you take away from yourself. And that's what and that, that's what people talk about when they say teaching, when they talk about teaching being such a selfless job, a selfless position, right, is the fact that you do things like that and you're not even, you don't even think about it, mm -hmm. you know? You don't even think about it. Like I, I told you all last week, I believe, me and my, my brother took me to a place and I said I wasn't going to be spending as much money. And just instinctively, I saw two shirts, two uniform shirts. And I was like, man, these shirts, $7 each. I was like, and I put them in and then I looked at them and I was like, you see what I mean? I, like, I just, it, it, it's just instinct to be like, yeah, let me put them in here, get them to the kids because I got some that are out of uniform. But it's like, no, no. And, and I think that's a hard thing as well. And we're going to get into this a little bit is is that feeling for a lot of teachers where we feel guilty. We feel guilty for taking our own personal health or our own personal interests ahead of others. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. And that's one thing that I found out from, for me. And, and, and if you can, if you relate to this, wonderful. It, it was, it's been very hard for me to be introspective and like actually look into myself and think about things that I've done or been through and relate them to, you know, to teaching and, and, and giving right as, as a teacher, I, I just haven't, you're so busy giving, you don't take a chance to stop and say, Hey, how do you feel? What are you going through? And I think that's a big thing for teachers. So if there's one message I want to get, I want teachers to take from this. It's that don't, don't let this job take too much, take so much away from you that, that you forget who you are mm. or you forget how to love yourself. You forget how to take your own personal interests more seriously or with more priority because of all the of all the careers of all the jobs I've ever had, this by far is the one where what is it the Matrix where Neo touches? Oh yes, yeah, the Matrix where that like at the end of the Matrix he takes over the agent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to get like sucked in and become like <laughs> an agent. You you don't even know who you you're not even yourself anymore. And so that's a very very important thing I think teachers got to learn, especially especially first year teachers first year teachers let me tell you something first year teachers you are not captain save them all you can't save them all trust me it's been tried they keep that's why they keep saying you can't recreate the wheel it's a it's it's essentially a perfect creation since the t-bird was it model t that henry ford made right industrial revolution same essential component a circular wheel still there today in a Tesla or a Lamborghini or a 2022, 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe. It's the same construction, right? It's just been modified, but the, the wheel has not been changed. So you can't come in here with this mindset of, I'm going to change the world my first year. Shut up. No, you're not. Sit down. Sit down. Stop. Stop. Mm -hmm. Was that Michael Jordan? Stop it. Get help. Stop it. Get help. You're not going to do it. And that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. You're not going to, you're not going to save them all. It's okay. You're going to help those who want to be helped. And I think that's a big thing that Hill taught me was 
and you mentioned it, Hill, right? It's like, we, man, these kids, man, he ain't had a dad. He's so bad, this, that, and third. I'm going to do everything I can to help him. Here it goes. You're getting taken over. Slowly but surely, you pop, 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 take it over. And before you know it, you're lost in the trance, right? You're lost in the trance. That's what happens to so many of us. And then you get to that point where I think that's where I was this year, where it's like, ah, ah, I'm over here. <laughs> you know, he's just like, I was going this way. <laughs> we gonna go this way. So for, for, for young teachers, especially, right? For young teachers, especially, don't, don't get into that mode of like, I can save them all. I can, I can, I, I'm going to be the agent of change. All right. This is not dangerous minds. You're not Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> this is not. Uh, You're not cool. Uh, you can say Coolio. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is not whatever that movie is with Hillary Swank. Water, you know, water, yeah. uh, I, I will say, I will love Stand and Deliver though. Stand and Deliver, that was fire. Yeah. You remember Stand and Deliver? But I think Stand and Deliver was built based off a true story, though. It was a true story, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Because that's the one with the Hispanic math teacher, right? With Ed Edward James Olmos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Lou yeah. Diamond that's Phillips. Based, yeah. That's based off a true story, yeah. That, 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 that one right there, that's fire. You yeah. know what I mean? That, 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 that's a fire story. But well, And see, this is the thing. Oh, and, and you know me, bro. I, I hear things that I want to go practical, right? Uh, and I definitely agree with the fact that as an educator – you know, it's, it's, it's like a life raft, right? Or, or oxygen mask, you know, the plane's going down, you got to put on your mask first. You know what I'm saying? So if your mental health is not, you know, up to speed, if you need a break, do your best to take a break. Like you're not doing anyone favors by burning out and, you know, and then going out clubbing super hard on Friday, to woke up hungover on Saturday, just because you're frustrated from the whole week. Preach. You know what I'm saying? Like, Preach. not doing anybody any favors. And the, the hard part is, you know, your administrators, yeah, they're pushing you. Oh, no, we don't want you to be out. We, we you know, we've already took as many long-term subs as we can and made them full-time and all this other stuff. And there's not enough subs. Look, you got to take care of yourself. Why? Because the thing is, that's the only way that we you can effectively give back to others, you know, Again, you know, people say, well, like to us, well, why did you make the ladder and success app? Again, if we could save you time lesson planning and you have more time for yourself and you could have these really relevant, powerful conversations with your students, and maybe it's going to help make you five or 10% more effective to the majority of your students instead of focusing on those few. And like I said, I want to take this practical. Any classroom, you take a classroom, 20, 25 students, 17 students, right? You're probably going to have 5 to 10% of that classroom be super knuckleheads. You know what I'm saying? You know, five, just super knuckleheads. And then you're going to have maybe another 5 to 10% of that classroom where, again, they, they're so involved, learning disabilities, all those different kinds of things. It's like, okay, that's, that's hard to reach in itself and from an academic standpoint, right? But then you're going to have the bulk majority of those students who are overlooked because of those 5 to 10% that are absolute knuckleheads. You know what I'm saying? And so, again, if you got, you know, 25 students, you got about two, three students in that class that it's like these people or these, these little demons are trying to kill me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and don't get me wrong. When I worked in behavior intervention, that's I like I would I was I would try to be really intentional because you know, they had all these different statistics and they came out talking about, you know, suspension and how that affected students' grades and all this other stuff. And so the reality was what I did was my program for the kids was I would just go and visit the kids in their classroom and make sure they're doing their work. And I would cycle by so much and just, you know, I'd have quick little punishments that I would give them. You know what I'm saying? A quick, also quick little rewards that I'd give them. But I would cycle by so much that the kids didn't know when I was coming. So because they didn't know that, they were always on the lookout like, man, this dude could be here any second. Beautiful. And now, now again, this is elementary kids, you know, fourth graders, fifth graders, or fourth graders, before they, you know, before they got too buck wild. Some before, of them, they come see, before they come see us, ah, whoop, whoop. Yeah, some of those, were, some of them were buck wild. But, but on a very practical note, as an educator, say, hey, look, I'm going to try to make myself as, as effective as I can be 
to reach the 80% of students that I know I'm capable of reaching. You know what I mean? Instead of focusing on that 10 or 20% where it's like either they're so struggling academically, it, I, it just might not happen, or they're so off behaviorally, it just not might not happen. So that, that's all I wanted to input. Beautiful, beautiful, Festus. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. That's why you, you see me. I wish y'all could see our chat thread. It's so beautiful. Every week, the chat thread. We don't give the chat thread enough credit. I can't wait till this starts to grow because it's coming in Jesus' name. It's because when we do it, like, the, the, people can see the chat thread and they can see how... <laughs> Because I'll be wild and I ain't gonna lie, I apologize to you. I will apologize to you, first of all, apologize to Daniel. Because when y'all be going there, I'll be like, <laughs> preach, <laughs> preach, <laughs> preach. Because I'm looking, I'm just like, this stuff, like it's it's so poignant and it makes so much sense. And and the reason why I was saying that is because it what you were saying, Fest, is actually had a hundred percent to do with the next slide or the next question I had for us. You mentioned it. Look at this. Are we setting the example we truly want our students to follow? Are we setting the example we truly want our students to follow? So here's the thing. Teachers come in, we raising, we raising all this noise. Hey, ma'am, give us respect. Da, 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 da. Are we really setting the example we truly want our students to follow? All right. And I'm going to give you my own personal, I guess, testimony on this. I had to go after last year, I had to go and get, I started, I started, I started going to therapy, <laughs> started going to therapy with a psychiatrist, went to a therapist, kind of told me some things that I got to do to help me with my mental health, dealing with a lot of anxiety. I thought it was depression. It was anxiety. So I had to learn about that and learn how to deal with those things. And it was very eye opening, very powerful for me. I grew in my spiritual walk. Right. And so these things are very, very helpful. And so now when I take a look back, I'm like, man, if, if, if I'm getting better, right. Mentally, right. Cause mentally, socially, culturally, vocationally, spiritually, financially, educationally, right. And all these different aspects who benefits the most, right. My students, right. Because I become a more, I become a more whole rounded person who can then influence the lives of my students better folks it's it, this it's all principles it's all principles and natural law i was watching a video with ray, ray, ray dalio and he was talking about basically the five things you need the five principles you need to be successful know your problems no i, I don't i can't remember them all but i, I was just remember he, he said you gotta you gotta figure out your problem right and then you have to find a solution for your problem, right? So if the, if the problem is with you, you got to fix it with you. If the problem is with someone else, you have to help that person fix it within, them, within themselves. And then you keep that cycle going. But can you imagine that? That there are principles and no matter what you do, get this, principles that in, no matter what you do, if you follow these things, if you follow these things, you are at least guaranteed the option of success. So it's out there for us. We just got to do it. But I, I just really need us to understand that because it's like everything in our world is contrary or opposite to that idea that if you follow these things, you can, you, you know, you get, you gain access to success. You can get success. And, and, you know, you just think about the name of what we do. I'm looking at Fisher shirt right now, laddering your success. I mean, what more, what more can you ask for? What more can you really ask for? Right? Fester, did you want to say something? It's, it's, it's about time folks. Look, we can't, we can't give you everything. You know what I mean? We can't, we can't give it all. All right. And, and I'll let you know now, Fester, we, this is probably going to be like a part, a two, a two part because yeah, I've got about, yeah, because next week, what I want us to do is. I want us to take what we've just talked about and implement the be no do methodology into it. I'm looking at my slides right now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about next week, what values, character traits, and principles are necessary for today's teachers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, what resources are available and how do I use them? Here it goes again. 
No, I'm going to see you then. You ain't doing nothing with your life. Nothing with your life. And do. How do we deploy and execute with excellence? Folks, this is all from laddering your success. This is our be no do methodology, right? And we're going to talk about how do we implement the be no do methodology for teachers in, in, in the current mode or dispensation of, of education and teaching, right? And then we're going to get into some hot fire. When I say hot fire, I'm talking about, I, th I think it's called digging, digging into the sevens. Mm. We're going to get deep. We're going to get really deep because this is something that I've been wanting to talk about. I'm just going to give you a, just a question, just a question to ask yourselves. What are some known and unknown biases we face as teachers or we deal with as teachers culturally, politically? That's all I'm going to say. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, definitely, definitely looking forward to the next episode. Is it cool if I close this out? Oh, man, absolutely. Go ahead. D Hill, anything? All right, that's what's up. Well, as we always say, Listen, there are legitimate excuses for not going to college. There's no legitimate excuse for not getting into education. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Laddering and Success. I am Festus Samoye. Here's Daniel here, Daniel Hill, and Mr. Olainka Sharonke. We want to thank you for your time. Y'all be blessed. We'll see you next week. Okay. All right. Peace. Oh, you still there? Well, thank you so much for listening to the LIS podcast. 